Hello everyone! As everyone is preparing for the World Chess Championship match in November between Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Caruana, it's interesting to see how the World Champion and the World Chess Championship Challenger uh, are preparing for their big, uh, for their big matchup. As uh, you've seen, uh, Fabiano Caruana did play the Olympiad uh, and he did play all the games and he did achieve a, a ver a ver an excellent score uh, while Carlsen was uh, training in his uh, secret camp um, and now, well, uh, some a uh, month before the World Chess Championship starts. Uh, here we have Carlsen, uh, he's playing uh, in the European uh, Team uh, Chess Club competition. So uh, he he got offers from a lot of clubs to, to join them, uh, but uh, he refused all of them and he's playing for the Valarenga Sh Shah Club uh, from Oslo uh, for free. So uh, of course he, he doesn't need money and uh, no club has uh, that much money that he would change his mind uh, due to money. So uh, the championship is being played here. Uh, it's a holiday. It's a Greek holiday resort in uh, Porto Caras. As you can see, it's very nice. So if you're, you know, if you study really hard and uh, become an excellent chess player, you will be also be able to visit uh, nice places uh, such as these. Uh, so without further ado, uh, Magnus Carlsen uh, faces uh, Russian Grandmaster Vladimir Potkin on the first uh, on board one. And uh, he decided, as he skipped the round one, he said that uh, he's just uh, here to relax before the match and perhaps uh, help out his teammates if needed. So this is a pretty tough matchup, so he decided to help. So without further ado, Carlsen has the white pieces and he opens with e4. Uh, we have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to c4. Here we have bishop to c5, the Joko Piano game, and here comes b4. This is the Evans Gambit, but it was not played in this game. Uh, here Carlsen played c3, he went into the main line of the Joko Piano, uh, and knight to f6. Now we have the main line. Uh, d3, we have d6, knight b to d2, this is all standard. Uh, we have castles, b4, bishop to b6, and now bishop to, bishop to b3. Uh, preparing to meet bishop to e6 with bishop to c2, but also making room on c4 for this knight. You want to go knight c4 uh, and then grab the bishop on b6, th thus winning the bishop pair. Uh, also, uh, we do have uh, some live footage from this event. Uh, if you remember, Nikki Riga, uh, we've uh, checked out her photos uh, during the 2018 Candidates Tournament. Uh, here we also have some live footage from this event. So there you have it. I don't know, uh, I've never actually used the video uh, in OBS, but it should work pretty nicely. There you have it. This is uh, footage from this game. It was played today. There's Magnus Carlsen. Uh, and there you have it. Uh, two teams battling it out and his opponent having a nice sip of something. Uh, Mr. Mr. Potkin. So there you have it. I have no idea if this will uh, if this will show correctly, but I hope it does. So there you have it, and uh, let's continue with the game. Uh, we have knight to e7, uh, knight to c4 now as planned, going for the dark square bishop, uh, knight to g6, and now castles. We have c6. Uh, increasing the pressure against the d5, uh, but also perhaps if Carlsen doesn't capture, perhaps this bishop can also come to c7. So Carlsen decides to grab it. We have uh, knight captures, pawn captures, and now a4. So Carlsen has the bishop pair, but uh, in exchange uh, black has a semi-open uh, a file. Uh, rook to e8, and now comes bishop to e3. Uh, bishop to e6, uh, Carlsen avoids the exchange, bishop to c2, and now comes d5. Uh, and okay, we have h3, queen to c7, and now rook to e1. Uh, h6, and now comes e captures on d5. Knight captures on d5, and now bishop back to d2, not allowing the knight to capture, but also guarding the c3 pawn. Uh, bishop to f5, and here, uh, after a lot of uh, consideration, uh, Carlsen plays d4. Uh, the engine agrees with Carlsen, and uh, going into all of these exchanges will be, as you'll see, favorable for white. Uh, bishop captures on c2, queen captures on c2, and now e captures on d4. Knight captures on d4, and now c5. It seems like white just uh, gave black an opportunity to undouble his pawns, uh, but actually this will all be, all be fine. b captures on c5, pawn captures on c5, and now knight to f5. And now you see that Carlsen has a very nice uh, f5 square for his knight, and it will not be all that easy to challenge it here. Uh, knight g2 e7 is, uh, is possible. Uh, to kick the knight away or, or force another series of, of trades, but then c4 uh, seems to be a very nice move and uh, black decides against this. Uh, so after knight to f5 we have queen to c6 and now comes c4 by Carlsen uh, nonetheless. 
Uh, knight d to f4. Uh, Carlsen trades off a pair of rooks. Rook captures on e8. Rook captures on e8. And now bishop captures on f4. Uh, knight captures on f4 and now knight back to e3. Cutting off the rook uh, from controlling the e-file, also controlling the c4 pawn, defending it, and perhaps uh, if this knight is ever kicked away, uh, perhaps uh, even planning knight to d5. Uh, but for now you do have to keep an eye on the g2 pawn. If you move the knight, then queen captures on g2 will be checkmate. Uh, so rook to d8, uh, and now comes rook to b1. Uh, a nice semi-open file for the rook, perhaps ideas like uh, a5 and rook to b6 are coming. And also black has to keep an eye on the b7 pawn at all times. Uh, here it seems like the b6 would have been uh, the best idea for black, not allowing Carlsen to push this pawn any further to a5. Uh, but here uh, Potkin uh, had a different idea. He played h5, with ideas of pushing this pawn all the way to h4, uh, really stifling that white king. Uh, Carlsen grabs this opportunity as b6 was not played to play a5, grabbing even more space. Uh, we have h4 as planned and now comes rook to b6. Uh, a very active move by Carlsen, uh, but uh, the engine gives a queen to f5 as even better with uh, a double attack against this knight and against this pawn and only then does uh, a rook lift come into the game. So after we defend the knight, let's say queen c7, now comes rook to b5 and here uh, it's, it will be uh, a much better position for white. Uh, Carlsen's idea is a bit different, he goes rook to b6 with an attack on the queen, and now queen to d7. Uh, queen to b2, now creating a double attack against the b7 pawn, uh, and here we have knight to d3. Uh, attacking Carlsen's queen, you do have to react to this, queen to b1, uh, again the b7 pawn is under attack, and here... Uh, knight to b4. This seems to be uh, the first mistake of the game uh, by Mr. Potkin. Uh, the correct idea would have been to play queen to a4 with a double attack against the a5 pawn and against the c4 pawn uh, that's currently guarded by the knight, but okay, you're threatening queen captures on a5. So now after rook captures here, queen captures, uh, knight comes to d5, uh, you have queen to e1 check, black can force a trade of queens, and after captures, captures, uh, knight to e7 check. King h7 and now after knight to f5 uh, attacking the h4 pawn. g5 is coming and here it would seem that uh, uh, the, the material on the board is completely equal and it seems that black will be able to hold this. Uh, but again uh, instead of this queen to a4, uh, a4 move uh, we had knight to b4 uh, on the board. Now the, the knight is cutting off the queen's influence and the rook captures on b7 is no longer an option. Uh, but now Carlsen uh, uh, takes the advantage and plays queen to e4. Now uh, eyeing the b7 pawn all the way uh, from e4. So again, this is a big threat. Uh, queen to d4, offering a trade of queens. And here Carlsen accepts this. Uh, queen captures, pawn captures, and the rook captures on b4. Uh, we have pawn captures on e3, f captures on e3, and now rook to d1 with check. King to f2, and now rook to a1, going after the a5 pawn. And here Carlsen simply defends it. Rook to b5. Uh, rook to a2 check, king to f3, and now g6. Uh, we have c5 by Carlsen, and now king to g7. And here Carlsen plays king to e4. He leave, uh, leaves the g2 pawn unguarded, but uh, he doesn't care about the g2 pawn or about the king side. Uh, at one point he wants to play rook captures on b7, and then start pushing uh, both of his pass pawns. Uh, here rook captures on g2 was played, but... Uh, uh, waiting for Carlsen to capture on b7 wouldn't have been any better. Uh, it's hard to make a move. You can't move the f pawn. Well, okay, you can play f5, but that's a bit too much. If f6, then rook captures on b7 with check. Uh, if you try to go away with the king, for example, king to h6 to go this way, again, uh, you capture on b7, and then again the f7 pawn is unguarded. And if you try something like king f6, just uh, rook b6 check. King goes back, uh, rook captures on b7. Rook captures on a5, and now you can start pushing your pawn. Uh, rook to c5, you can start pushing the pawn here, uh, and uh, here white would be winning. Oh, let's say king f6, uh, king to d4, attacking the rook, uh, and now you would simply play king to d5 and prepare this maneuver. Um, this will even come with check, plays the rook here, uh, and doesn't really matter. You will simply block off the, the black rook, and uh, you will be able to promote your pawn. So, after king to e4... Uh, not waiting for Carlsen to grab here, but uh, uh, Potkin starts uh, capturing pawns on the king side. Rook captures on g2, rook captures on b7, and now g5. Uh, we have c6, Carlsen simply starts pushing his passed pawn. g4 now, Potkin wants to create a passed pawn of his own. We have c7, and now rook to c2, putting a rook behind a passed pawn, uh, but it doesn't help him. King to d3, and now rook to c1. Uh, 
Uh, playing something like g3 with ideas of sacrificing the rook is pointless because after you push the pawn, Carlsen will simply go rook to b1 uh, and cover uh, the g1 square. So after king to d3, uh, we have rook to c1 and now comes king to d2. Uh, rook to c6, uh, we have a6, of course you cannot capture it because then the c, the c pawn can be promoted as the rook will no longer be guarding the c8 square. So after a6, we have g captures on h3 and now a7. Now, a8 is a big threat. Uh, we have h2, and now uh, feel free to pause the video here and find the winning move for white. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds to do it. You know, feel no pressure whatsoever. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. Uh, you are an excellent endgame player. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the move is rook to b1. Simply preventing black from, <laughs> from uh, promoting uh, his pawn to a queen. Uh, if, if you try to, to promote your own pawn to a queen and allow black to promote his pawn to a queen, uh, this uh, this would be terrible for white. So hopefully you all found rook to b1. Uh, this is move 49, uh, and it was in this position that uh, Vladimir Potkin decided to resign the game. Uh, as the game finished uh, not so long ago, I don't have the result of the entire uh, match, but uh, we're going to cover, of course, a couple of more. Uh, games throughout the entire European Team Chess Championship, so uh, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the results some more. So there you have it. Uh, like I said, we do have some new photos. Here you have a nice photo of Magnus Carlsen and Vladimir Potkin from this game. All Both of them are from the video taken by Nikki Riga. Uh, for those of you who have been following my channel since the 2018 Candidates Tournament, you, don't, you do know Nikki. Uh, this is Nikki. I will put uh, the links to her social media profiles uh, in the description below. So feel free to check it out as she does have some excellent photos uh, from a lot of chess tournaments. She's now uh, the official photographer here. So feel free to follow her as well. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, Joshua Borelli, Ricky Brown, Christopher Lerbs, uh, Jeffrey Clayman, and Ricky Brown for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I'll see you soon, hopefully, uh, with some more interesting content. Thank you all, and I'll see you soon.